All right, this is another print today. Uh, as you can see, it's going, it's printing the second half or second portion of this print. The first part was printed right here, and you can see that you can almost see through the first layer. This, you can almost see the blue through the first layer, and that means it's been troweled down properly, at least in my book. If the print fails to have a smooth surface or lines or bumps or gaps or anything, you know, wrong, I would start it over. But apparently the first layer of the first part of this print printed great. You can see that for yourself. This is PLA. There's no messy purple Elmer's glue stick required. This is, of course, printing on blue painter's tape. So it's going to happen. The first layer, if you look at the bottom, when, you, when this print is done and you flip it up and you look at the bottom, you will be looking at the bottom of the first layer. So to see how well the first layer went down, and we can see it's going down great, but say when this print is done, and you still wanted to see, maybe you missed it, you wanted to see how well that first layer went down, look at the bottom. If it looks, you know, crappy, I don't know any other word to say it, if it just looks unexpectedly crappy, then it didn't go well. That first layer didn't go well, and it's very possible that your entire print didn't go well. It, it didn't start out great. So now, I want to show that this outer line right here, is the skirt of the entire print. I added this square here, this outer line here, I added that. I use that for uh, referencing uh, to see how well the print's gonna go in this location. It obviously is going to go well. And now it's printing this square, uh, now it's moved up one layer, so it would indeed jump out to this square right here and print the next layer of that square. It is a 0.3 millimeter height is that square right there. And then when that's done, it's going to jump over to this part of the print and lay down the second layer here, then jump over to the second part of the print and do the second layer there. So I just wanted to show you that it's going well as usual as always in this particular setup that all my prints have gone through for the last five years, three, well, let's see, 3,900 prints. This is the way I do it. And I always go through the same setup procedure because in my mind, I know it's going to finish properly. I don't want to do some half-ass setup and then, you know, 30 minutes later, later have it, you know, crap. So this is kind of a routine I go through that always produces a good print. It, it, it always does. I mean, out of 3,900 prints, you think I'd figure it out by now. This is the hot end right here. You can see it. This is used to get this filament to the bed. Once the filament has been extruded out of the nozzle onto the bed, its job is over. But it continues throughout the entire print to trowel down filament onto each layer as it builds up. That's 3D printing. That's how it works. This is not mold injection. It is FDM, filament deposition modeling. So it's not going to be nearly as strong as one chunk of, say, plastic squished, smushed into a, a mold. This is how FDM works. Now, I prefer not to have a gizmo up here. They call it direct drive. I prefer not to do that because I don't need it. I've never needed it. Direct drive for me doesn't produce any better quality overall than just literally coming through this hot end heat sink to the bed. That, it, it produces filament because that's, that's how it was designed to do it. So you put filament from here through the extruder, it pulls filament, it pushes filament. 
While it's pushing it, it's under pressure. That pressure is being pressed on the flat surface as it builds up. So basically, each layer as it goes up is flat because it started out flat. It started out flat. It has to. Physi physically, it has to print. Okay, so this is the plastic extruder. That's all that's required to get the filament from here, through here, down a Bowden tube. Again, this, this is because the head is moving. It needs a means to get the filament from here to here without direct drive. Direct drive adds weight. You can't stop gravity. So weight is going to be hanging on this thing. If, if you do the electronic gizmo here, the weight of that or the, the whole setup procedure is, is hanging on here. I would have taken all that crap off, just have what's required to get filament from here through here to the bed. That's it. One, two, three, A, B, C. And you can see this for yourself. I'm not making this stuff up. Check this out. Let me get this out of the way. A non-heated bed. You can see right here. Zero set point is a non-heated bed. It doesn't need heat to support adhesion when you do it in this fashion. Now, again, how other people do it, however, what beds they use or whatever the hell they use to get filament onto this carriage, to get the bed onto the carriage, whatever they use, they use whatever they can. Okay, so in this means right here, you got the mirror, you got the blue painter's tape, you got the nozzle pushing filament down to the bed. That's it. All right, I'll report back uh, when this when this print finishes because basically to check out the first layer, even though maybe you missed it, and you want to see the first layer, just look at the bottom. The bottom reflects what the first layer did. And the first layer will pick up the texture of whatever you're printing on. Whatever that first layer is being troweled down to the surface, it's going to reflect that. There you go. Happy printing.